Hi everyone, welcome to Study Simplified. In the previous videos, we have seen the Laplace transform example where the given part was a time domain function and we can find a Laplace domain function using the Laplace transform, right? So there were two methods. The method one was the standard method using the definition, solving the integration and getting the answer. And the method two was the tricky method. I gave you the standard result. Once you remember that, then solving the questions are very easy. You can get the answer in seconds. Now moving forward to the next topic, inverse Laplace transform. So when you have the given part is a Laplace domain function and you need a time domain function, you can use the inverse Laplace transform, just the opposite of the Laplace transform. No big deal, uh, nothing new to remember or nothing new to study. Just you have to do the inverse, okay? So do the opposite of the Laplace transform, you will get the answer and the function would be in the time domain. So let us see by an example. So let us see how the inverse Laplace transform is just the opposite of the Laplace transform. As you can see here, we have a time domain function e raised to at. So Laplace of e raised to at is 1 over s minus a. Now, if you want to find the inverse Laplace transform, the given part should be this, right? A Laplace domain function and the requirement is a time domain function. So let us see the opposite, the inverse Laplace transform. So that is the point number two. If you do the Laplace inverse of 1 upon s minus a, you will get the answer in time domain, right? So the answer is e raised to plus a t. You are just doing the opposite. You are just doing the opposite of the Laplace transform and you are getting the answer. So always remember that if you are going from time domain to Laplace domain, it is Laplace transform. And if you are going from Laplace domain to time domain, it is inverse Laplace transform. Let us see some more example on inverse Laplace transform. So the first question is Laplace inverse of 2 upon s minus 3 minus 3s upon s square plus 16. Tell me what is the answer. As you have used the linearity property, the linearity property in Laplace transform, same you can use in the Laplace inverse also. What was the linearity property? If two functions are added or subtracted, you can split the Laplace. Similarly, if two functions are added or subtracted, you can split the Laplace inverse also. This is nothing but this part is Laplace inverse operator. So now you can use your opposite of Laplace transform logic to get the answer. So look carefully, this is the constant part, take it outside. So 2 is outside and Laplace inverse of 1 upon s minus 3, it is nothing but e raised to plus 3t. Similarly, here 3 is also constant, take it outside. Then it would be 3 into Laplace inverse of s upon s square plus 16. And 16 is written as 4 square because this format is s upon s square plus omega square which was Laplace of cos of omega t right so you have to go backwards from Laplace to the time domain which is nothing but inverse Laplace transform so answer would be cos of omega t which is cos of 4t okay let us see some more interesting question the example 2 Laplace inverse of 1 upon s square minus 2s plus 5 tell me what is the answer okay in the first attempt you cannot say the answer directly because it is not simple you can see that the format here is not the standard format which you have studied in the Laplace transform. So your task is to convert this format into the standard format. So for that we have to use some technique, we have to use some manipulations. So let us see how we can do that. If you look carefully at the denominator part, it is s square minus 2s plus 5 which is not a perfect square. Like if it was s square minus 2s plus 1, you can write it as s minus 1 the whole square, correct? But this is not the format. The format is we have plus 5. So for that you have to look at the first two part which has the variable. So s square minus 2s, these are the two terms. In that uh, two terms, what you can do is you can say that I can write it as s minus 1 the whole square which will give me the first two terms. If you expand s minus 1 the whole square, the first two terms are s square minus 2s. But the third term is plus 1, right? The third term is plus 1. But your requirement is plus 5. That is the reason I am adding plus 4 so that my question is now manipulated in the form something minus something the whole square format. So I hope the first step is clear what, what we are doing. We are just manipulating the denominator. We need s minus something or s plus something the whole square format. Now why I need this? Because the second point, you have learned the shifting property in the Laplace transform. According to the shifting property, whenever e raised to at is multiplied to a time domain function, the position of s is shifted at s minus a. 
if it is e raised to minus at then the position of s is shifted at s plus a right so this we have studied in the laplace transform the same logic we are using here see laplace inverse of 1 upon s minus 1 the whole square plus 2 square in this part the position of s is shifted at s minus 1 so go back if the position of s is shifted at s minus 1 it is because of the exponential term so you have to take the exponential term outside so it would be e raised to plus t and now the position of s is at origin so it is because you have uh, taken e raised to plus t outside now you can say that the remaining part is laplace inverse of 1 upon s square plus 2 square from the previous step you got e raised to t laplace inverse of 1 upon s square plus 2 square but you know that laplace of sine omega t was equal to omega upon s square plus omega square so here if you apply your inverse laplace transform logic so basically means you have to go backwards so you have this part uh, right you need this part sine part if you go backwards this is nothing but inverse laplace transform so in that case numerator has omega but here you do not have from the previous step in the numerator omega was not present for that reason i have multiplied the omega i have divided the omega so that i can say that laplace inverse of 2 upon s square plus 2 square is nothing but sine of 2t which is sine of omega t and you will get your final answer in the first example we saw the linearity property in inverse laplace transform in the second example we saw the shifting property in the inverse laplace transform now moving forward to the third question laplace inverse of 1 upon 16 s square minus 9 tell me what is the answer again you don't know the standard answer what would be the laplace inverse of that then you have to do some manipulation you have to use some technique to convert this format into the standard format so let us see how we can do that the first point is 16 the coefficient is multiplied to the s square always whenever any coefficient is multiplied to the s square take that coefficient outside so if i take 16 outside the bracket would be s square minus 9 upon 16 which can be written as 3 by 4 the whole square so this is nothing but 3 by 4 the whole square so if you look carefully at this part you can take this 1 over 16 which is constant take it outside and the remaining part is laplace inverse of 1 upon s square minus 3 by 4 the whole square so here if you look carefully what is the standard result whenever you have omega upon s square minus omega square the inverse laplace transform is sine hyperbolic of omega t so this is the answer in the time domain now if you look carefully there is a problem here what is that problem omega is not present in the numerator and if omega is not present in the numerator your task is to multiply the omega you have to divide the omega and if you do that you can clearly say that the answer of this is sine hyperbolic of omega t which is sine hyperbolic of 3 by 40 and if you do the calculation here you will get 1 by 12 as your answer okay let us see some algebraic based example tell me what is the laplace inverse of s plus 2 the whole cube upon s raised to 6 now actually this question is interesting because again you don't know what to do like you do not have the standard result for that whenever you do not have any standard result you have to do some manipulation you have to do some extra steps so let us see what step we have to do so the very first step is this part is a plus b the whole cube so a plus b the whole cube is a cube plus 3 a square b plus 3 a b square plus b cube this is the formula and a here was s b here was 2 just substitute that and you will get the numerator part denominator is as it is now what you can say that in the numerator i have four functions added this is function 1 this is function 2 function 3 and function 4 using the linearity property i can split the laplace inverse right so that is the reason i can split this part as well this is my first part so s cube upon s to the power 6 is 1 over s cube then similarly you can split the second part which which will make it as 6 upon s to the power 4 the third part is this and the fourth part is this please make a note that laplace of t raised to n was equal to n factorial upon s raised to n plus 1 so if you take laplace inverse on both the side laplace inverse and laplace will cancel out each other so laplace inverse of n factorial upon s raised to n plus 1 the answer is t raised to n so you have to look carefully in the previous slide we got laplace inverse of 1 over s cube but if you want the inverse laplace transform you have to match the format the format is this part so numerator should have n factorial 
and here if you uh, compare the formula so 3 is nothing but n plus 1 the value of n here is 2 so 2 factorial should be multiplied 2 factorial should be divided because this is constant 1 upon 2 factorial you, you can take it outside so 1 upon 2 factorial is nothing but 1 upon 2 and laplace inverse of 2 factorial upon s cube is t raised to 2 i hope you got this part if you got this part you can do the manipulations for the rest part as well using the same technique you can say that here also the power is what 4 so 4 is nothing but n plus 1 the value of n here is 3 so 3 factorial should be multiplied 3 factor factorial should be divided this part is constant part take it outside and laplace inverse of 3 factorial upon s raised to 4 would be t cube and you can do it for the rest part do the calculation and you will get the final answer I hope you liked the video. All these concepts, tricks and techniques are important for gate examination because in gate examination you have to solve more questions in less time. All these techniques, tricks and concepts you will find in my engineering mathematic notes. So if you want to buy the notes, uh, the contact and the email id are on the screens now. तो फ्रेंड्स अगर आपको मेरी वीडियो पसंद आ रही हो देन डू लाइक दिस वीडियो शेयर विद योर फ्रेंड्स एंड सब्सक्राइब टू माय YouTube चैनल तो मिलते हैं अगली वीडियो में टिल देन टेक केयर दिस इज श्रेनिक जैन पीस आउट